Welcome to MedShark Insider with Bill Fukui, your expert host on all things medical marketing and SEO. Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to another episode of MedShark's Insider. Uh, today, I've got a really um, insightful uh, individual that's going to bring some light onto some new technology. And I think where technology has kind of come to today um, is that our practices need to be adapting. They really need to be adapting. And uh, today I actually have Josh uh, Combe, who is uh, with Podium. Uh, and I know a lot of practices may be familiar with Podium from uh, the review marketing side and getting more positive reviews, which is absolutely really important. Um, but I think Josh has got some insights on some additional things and kind of where uh, Podium and he is seeing this entire communication um, uh, phenomenon that's happening online and how practices need to adapt to that. So today, Josh, I want to welcome you. Yeah, thanks, Bill, for having me on. And yeah, I've been at Podium now for just over four years. And we started out as a, you could say, a review tool, but yeah. have since expanded quite a bit. And so I'm, I'm excited to, to talk to you about some of the additional things we do other than just reviews for businesses. Yeah, and you know, that just between you and I, that's how I, I got to um, get familiar with, with you guys was initially was just through reviews. And I think that's such a short-sighted thing. And it wasn't until recently that we kind of re-engaged and I, I got some information from you that I, it, it, the light kind of turned on. The light turned on that there was way more to communication and just trying to get reviews. It's such a small part of, you know, marketing and, and quite frankly, sales. Uh, selling is, you know, it's, it's that uh, four, four letter word that we don't like to talk in medical, but this is a sale. <laughs> Let's face it, this is a sale. When I'm getting somebody to, to move forward with having a, a surgery or a treatment, uh, and they have the option to spend that money, not all on a, another competitor, but even on a different product. It could be the big screen TV. It could be um, now that travel's kind of opening up, it may be a trip. Um, so it's, it's how are we selling our services uh, and communicating with our audience. So um, one of the first things that I, uh, you had uh, forwarded over to me a, a study in terms of a lot of the communication research that you guys did. Um, and one of the things that kind of came out that I found really interesting was that it said 85% of uh, marketers say that um, uh, their customers uh, prefer to, you know, communicate through um, telephone, through email, and yet all the studies show that that's not necessarily what it is. And I get the feeling that people just gravitate towards, or our practices gravitate towards that simply because it's what they want, <laughs> not yeah. necessarily what, what consumers want. So give me some perspective uh, on some of this research that you guys did. I, th I found that to be fascinating. Yeah. And, and Bill, I think too, it's a lot of times it's not necessarily what the practices want. It's, it's more so what they're used to. So it's, they're comfortable. They've, they've been doing it this way for forever, you know, for a really long time. And so adapting or changing is hard a lot of times for, for businesses. But um, a lot of the studies we've done here is to just better understand what does the current patient journey look like? How has it changed? Because we know it has changed. The, the way that patients are wanting to reach out to your business is significantly different than 10 years ago, right? And so I, I like to use the phrase of like, your front door is no longer your front door. And what I mean by that is it's your website. It's your Google My Business page. It's your Facebook page. It's, it's the way that your, your patients are finding you initially. Um, it's a referral, right? It's a friend or family member. It's someone that's, that's mentioned you, but typically what they're doing is they're not picking up the phone. When I refer someone to a, to a business, I don't give them a phone number of that business and say, Hey, here's the number called Dr. So-and-so it's, Hey, I went and saw this doctor. He's great. Look him up online. 
check him out online. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing is we're seeing that more and more people are using those methods to find businesses initially. Mm -hmm. And so we, we can talk through some of those data points, but yeah, one of the ones that's interesting is just the practices are, you could almost call it like stuck in their ways, right? They're Mm -hmm. so used to just using phone, the, the phone, talking mm-hmm. over the phone instead of wanting to adapt text messaging or wanting or looking for additional ways to to uh, open it up for their patients to communicate right. with them. Yeah. You know, and you kind of, I have to admit, I'm, a, I, I'm definitely an earlier generation than you are. Uh, and I've been in the, you know, the, the medical plastic surgery, dentistry, marketing, you know, business for the better part of 25 years. And, and we, back then, we didn't even have the internet. It was all about TV, radio, print advertising, yellow page advertising, that type of stuff. And when practices, you know, that don't have Nike dollars to spend on marketing, like yeah. brand and that kind of stuff, yeah. when they spend money, it needs to turn into a lead. And that lead, because they, they really don't have a, a lot of money to be spending on marketing compared to like corporate big name brands, um, they need to convert them. So for the longest time, I was always about, you got to, you know, when you put together campaigns, when you put together your website, everything is about, I need phone calls. I need telephone leads because number one, your staff is trained to, to handle phone calls. They're, you know, they're better at dealing with, you know, phone call leads and the consumers that are picking up the phone are usually a little further down the buying cycle to kind of expose themselves to a telephone conversation. They're, they're more committed. Okay. So it was always about, I need phone calls. I need phone calls. I need phone calls. And I still think that that's true. Um, Yeah. But a question that I had, I've got uh, a millennial daughter. Okay. She's, she's 28, 29. And she's, um, you know, now that millennial generation has become the new buying power in our economy. She's, you know, they're making good money now. Um, they're, they're very lifestyle driven. Uh, they are going to be driving the cosmetic and, you know, elective medical industry for many years. Um, and I, I think they grew up with this technology, like, you know, with text messaging and, you know, I'm down, I'm upstairs and I'm getting a text message from my daughter or something that says, hey, it's time to eat. I <laughs> feel like on, <laughs> you just come up and tell me it's time to eat or whatever. It's like, you're just over there. Um, how, does, how does practices in terms of communicating to this new millennial audience, what are you seeing in terms of what are practices doing? What are the better ways, the practices that are really adapting? What are they doing? Yeah, great, great question. And I, I agree with you as far as, you know, your daughter texting you that dinner's ready. And like, it's, it's just the way. It, so it's funny, my wife brought this up last weekend, but um, when millennials or, you know, the younger generation, I'm in my mid thirties, right? I, I'm like right there in that borderline, but um, millennials, a lot of times, if you ask them, Hey, show me what you do when you take a picture. For me, I go like this, right? They'll actually act like they're holding a cell phone to take a picture or with phone calls, you ask them to, to do the symbol of making a call. I do this. Millennials do this. They're so used to having their uh, cell phones with them all the time. Right. And it's just, it just goes to show the difference of the mindset that millennials have. And right. they always have their phone with them. It's constant. That's how they take right. the pictures. That's how they, they tell you dinner's ready. It's how they do everything. And so as a practice, we just need to adapt to that. And there's some easy ways to do it. The, the one thing I will say, cause you mentioned phone calls. I agree. I don't think phone calls are going away anytime soon. Like phone calls will continue to be a critical piece to your business, but messaging and texting is important. I'll talk about texting, but messaging just in general, whether it's Facebook Messenger or Instagram or texting in general or a web chat from your website, just being able to message with people that is going to give you that extra edge 
on the practices that are only available via via phone, via phone call. And, and so, yeah, I can jump into some ideas around that. The, you talked about leads and about lead generation. And, and I think that's honestly, it's one thing I find a lot of times I go to these doctors' websites, they've spent thousands of dollars to have a really, really nice, pretty looking site. Yeah. But it's not a lead generation tool. Yeah. You go to it and what's your call to action? What -hmm. are people doing when they get to your site? Are they, are they clicking on your phone number to call you or are they, do you have a messaging button there for them to reach out to you? So that's just something to think about, right? Is we're spending as practices, a lot of times thousands of dollars a month on marketing, Mm -hmm. but then what happens when we get them to the website, to the spot we want them on? Right. And, and that's where messaging becomes critical too, is do you have a streamlined, easy way to get them to communicate now with you, with mm-hmm. the business and to capture that lead and to have a chance to go after that? So that's one, one, one way to, to really help is if you're spending money on marketing, great, right? right? Continue doing that's how it. I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> that's right? how I get paid. <laughs> yeah. Like you've got a market nowadays, right? Yeah. Like you need to. Um, continue doing those things. But if you can increase the conversion rates on that marketing spend, if you can increase the ROI you're getting from that marketing dollars, why not? And that's where the web chat widget or having some sort of way to message and convert those leads more often from your website has been big for a lot of our businesses we work with. Okay. You know, the you, you bring up a, a really good point. Um, years ago, uh, We tried using, you know, like live chat, text messaging, putting those calls to action on the website. But very early on, we didn't get a lot of response. We didn't see it. And I think it was those, you know, the ones that we did get were the early adopters. Now when I put those things on, in fact, I have a consultant who would argue with me. He says, I hate those things. I don't like (laughs) those things. And she said, and she had a client that said, never put that, you know, I don't care what Bill says. Don't put that stuff on your website, you know, and yeah. um, I don't know what happened where we got him to do it. And then all of a sudden, this client was generating probably 40% more leads with the same traffic, with the same traffic. It's not like his yeah. traffic went up. His traffic was still the same. And yet his um, his revenue and his uh, contacts, leads went up almost 50%, almost immediately. Um, But again, that was kind of earlier, kind of early adopter kind of thing. We saw that. And then she became a huge believer. And now (laughs) everybody has to have those types of things. Um, But I think the practices, it's amazing how many practices still only have one of those contact forms as the you know, as the only really way of commuting with communicating with the practice other than, you know, a call to schedule a consultation, you know, that's, it, yeah. I mean, it's a different topic uh, for another call, but um, diversifying how people, I think one of the st- study points that was in your research was that people want control of how they communicate with businesses consumers want that control, especially, I think it's like my daughter, it's the millennials. They want control out of how they communicate with, with businesses. What are you finding with, with when you're talking to practices that don't have something like this or haven't really thought about it? How are you kind of educating them and getting them to, 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 to take the leap and do this type of stuff? Well, I think, Bill, like you had mentioned too, with that practice that saw that 40% increase, it, it, they had to kind of almost put like a little faith in you that it would work. <laughs> right. And yeah. then they were sold. They're like, I would never go without it. And, and honestly, that happens a lot of times at podium, right? It's these businesses are so used to doing things a certain way that they just, it, it's hard for them to understand. Like, so by adding a web chat widget or by adding this to my site, is it really going to help me or increase my, my lead flow? And so we, we try to do a really good job of showing case studies, showing examples, because there are a lot of them out there. 
There's, there's studies, there's examples of businesses that have done this and they've seen success just like the one you just mentioned. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I guess what I can say is it works and we've seen it across hundreds of similar businesses that have added that feature. And what I will say is not every web chat is created equal, just like okay. every website's not created equal. Every, right. every contact us form is not created equal. Right. And so I would question you, the question I would uh, have you ask yourself as a practice, if you're listening to this is, do I have a web chat? What's it look like? Is it simple? How many steps is it? Cause I can tell you there's some chats out there that they take almost longer than a contact us form to fill out. Yeah. And, and by the time that's done, you've already lost that potential patient, right? So yeah. patients want, want it to be easy. They want it to be quick. And that's why texting is so appealing to them is it's such a quick, easy thing to do. And you've got to make your web chat just like that. So make it feel really, really simple to do. Now, as a practice, if you can get that, let's say you can get a name and a phone number and that's your entire goal from that web chat. Yeah. Would we like them to schedule an appointment? Great. Of course, right. we'd like them to do that. But if you have that, now that's a lead that you can uh -huh. call, you can text, right. you can reach out to, and you have that at bat, that chance to try and convert them into a patient. And that's what I found is a lot of times when, it, when you overcomplicate it on the website, mm -hmm. they'll drop off before you even have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. That <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, on the lead gen side, I don't think there's any question if practices don't have that. I mean, that's one of the first things when somebody calls me up and says, you know, our, you know, our leads, I, I need to generate more cosmetic or, you know, fee for service, you know, patients and stuff. The very first thing I do, well, let me check out your website. And the, invariably, the first thing I look for, do you have digital communication options? Uh, for them. The other thing study uh, number that I saw was, a, I think it was uh, 85, 86% of, uh, of customers uh, want to be able to communicate with those businesses during non-business hours. Okay, during non-business hours. Um, so a lot of my practices, especially if I'm trying to drive telephone calls, like if we're doing paid ads like Facebook or, or Google ads, you know, and we can control when people see those ads, I would always say, if you want phone calls, just run them during, you know, daytime, weekday, maybe the lunch hour, be heavy on the lunch hour because they're free. Um, yeah. uh, but I am finding when I look at Google analytics, when I go through a client's analytics data, there's invariably spikes. That I would say mo the majority of traffic comes during those uh, weekday business hours, but there's always a, a lump of traffic that comes usually not in the early morning, but it's after the dinner hour. It's right around seven o'clock or eight o'clock, somewhere in there. There's another spike. So during the day, it's, it's high. It kind of goes down right around drive time, like people driving right. home from work or whatever. And then after the dinner hour, there's another spike. Um, and I think they just miss so much opportunity when those things happen and they don't have those things available. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think it's why you see there are practices. I talk to practices all the time that are opening up hours later and are they? Doing okay. Saturdays or they're doing, they're doing things to get traffic in that they typically don't during those traditional hours. Yeah. But I know that's not an option for every business. Right. And I don't know if it needs to be, I don't know if you need to necessarily be open during those hours, mm -hmm. but have a way to not lose those leads. Yes, you got to be able to connect with them. Correct. Yeah. And so that's where what we've done at Podium is we, when we, when we add our web chat to sites, we give them the ability to message during non-business hours. Mm -hmm. And there's automated responses that can go out to let them know, mm -hmm. Hey, it's, it's past our business hours. We'll get back to you as soon as we can, but now you've still captured that lead. So mm -hmm. that's where it's key, right? Is like you mentioned, there's all this traffic, there's this data showing that people want to communicate with businesses after hours. Right. But 
do you have an option for that? What yeah. is your option? And it's, and you've got to have one, honestly, like, or else you're just, you're just going to miss out on, yeah. on leads. I think, that, I think, I think you hit on a couple of things. Number one, you're going to miss out on it because they're going to visit multiple websites. Yeah. Make no mistake. They're going to visit multiple websites and the ones that cater to their, what they want are the ones that they, that, that earn the lead at the end of the day. Um, so I do think that, you know, don't assume that number one, that email forms are enough because I think the expectations are very different of a consumer that fills out and presses the submit button on an email form or somebody that engages with a chat or a text messaging call to action. It's kind of like my, my wife, when she sends me a text message, man, if I don't respond right away, my, her expectation is, at least tell me you're busy or something, yeah. you know, the expectation yeah. is very different. Whereas when she sends forwards me an email or something, if I don't get back to it in the next day or when I get, you know, until I see her at dinner or whatever, it's no it's big fine, deal. Right? <laughs> yeah. No big yeah. deal. So the expectations are very, very different in terms of that. And I want the expectation to be, I'm ready to do something, communicate with me you know, the iron's hot, strike now kind of thing. If they're wanting to communicate and, and address questions and do things right now, man, you don't want to create barriers for that because that state of yeah. mind changes, you know, when, does, when, for sure. when you get that email and you respond to that email or even pick up the phone because they put their phone number in the form. Great. But that was the next day or maybe the next afternoon. And I have completely forgot that I even sent that to you. Or I've yeah. sent out, you know, four or five correspondences to different practices and they've all gotten back to me because they had more immediate communication, digital options. I've already moved on, you know, I've already moved on. So I, I think those are, you know, where technology, we've got to be leveraging them, you know, more effectively in our practices. Yeah. No, hundred percent. And I think there's, there's two sides to it too. It's, you've got to make it easy for the patient or the potential patient to reach out to you. But on the other, on the flip side, it's got to be easy for yourself, for your staff to also yeah, handle and manage, because if not, it's going to get dropped somewhere. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's where we've put a lot of thought into that too. And I know not every practice is going to want to respond to stuff after hours. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is have a good automated response back. Almost like if someone calls you after hours, You've got your, your line set up already with a, you know what, a predetermined message. Have a similar type of message for your text that goes out. It lets them know, at least they know, oh, okay, they're responding to me. It is, and it can be automated, but it does make a big difference. The, the other thing too is give your staff or yourself an option to respond. Uh, Podium does an app. We have an app on, our, on your cell phone you can download and you can respond right from your phone. So we talked about how everyone has their phones on them all the time. Mm -hmm. You could take a minute at night and respond back to a quick message if you had a lead come in at night. And that way you're at least not letting that slip through the cracks because right. I could tell you there's going to be other businesses out there that are responding at night, that are doing these things. And so if you want to stay ahead of the curve or on you know, the same playing field as those, you need to have an option to, to take care of those messages. Gotcha. Hey, kind of after the, say, say we get the lead and yeah, we're going to, you know, invest in uh, lead conversion technology for digital. We're going to put that stuff on there. Um, that's stage one. I, I get the lead. Okay. I get somebody to start engaging with me uh, digitally, either through messaging or through, um, you know, chat or whatever. Um how are you guys set? If I was a practice that I didn't have this set up, uh, the question is, how is my staff? Are they supposed to be responding on their cell phone? How do they respond? How do they get these text messages and how do they respond to them? Yeah. So it's going to be different whether it's during hours or after hours. Mm -hmm. We have a desktop app as well. So if okay. you're in the office, it's going to be very simple. You can have that open, have Podium open. You'll see messages coming in and out. You can respond back and forth right through Podium. And then after hours, that's where having the app 
uh, on your phone because mm-hmm. you're not going to be lugging around your computer everywhere, right? right? So that's where having that app is really handy as well. So we've made it simple in that sense. We've got notifications that you can really customize. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get notified notified on your desktop or email or on your phone, that we can we can make those custom to to you. Mm-hmm. So each person in the office, if you've got a younger staff, they might want notifications on their phone yeah. or on their app because they're they're always on it, right? Yeah. But uh, if you've got someone that just prefers the desktop and that's how they work or they they prefer to use it, we can also uh, mm-hmm. tailor it to them. So the 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 platform, and I'm just seeing more and more uh, just communication with businesses and stuff. There, it's all coming through through text messaging, my dentist, my appointments, yeah. everything is coming through text messaging. Um, I think for practices that are not leveraging text messaging as a strategy, how would you, how would you coach people on how to best leverage, um, you know, messaging in a practice? Because I'm starting to see more and more, I think one of the, uh, again, in one of the studies that you showed was that, uh, I was actually surprised that it was that many. I think it was almost 36, 38, almost 40% are, you know, effectively leveraging text messaging as a form of communication in the practice with their patients, which is, I found surprisingly high considering how many, I I go to their website and they don't even have it, you know? (laughs) Um, how How does the text messaging in that study what kind of text messaging serve? Is it just appointment reminders? What, what kind of communication would you say uh, is, is being leveraged uh, through messaging? I, I feel like most practices are leveraging. Well, most that I talk to, I feel like the majority of practices now are leveraging appointment reminders via text. Like that has been a very important one. Yeah. And I would say, look, like that's, that's just a, a guess, I guess, or that, that's my feeling talking with these offices that the majority are using that. And they, they're using it because they've seen really good response. They've had more patients showing up. They've had patients confirming before the appointment, uh, you know, less no-shows, those, those sorts of things. And so that's just one example of where text messaging has been really powerful is for your existing or, or your scheduled patients, right? Mm-hmm. So recall is also another good one. People okay. are using it to maybe try and reach out to some patients that haven't been in for a while mm-hmm. and you, you haven't been able to get them on the phone. You've tried right. multiple times. Why not try a text, try mm-hmm. a text message. And a lot of times they'll res- respond better to that. So that's another way that people are using text, uh, text messaging for payments. So with COVID, I know I got in this habit where if a business didn't have an easy way for me to pay, like I, I would prefer not to pull out my card and have to use my card to pay. Like Apple pay was big for yep. me still is just cause I, you know, it's touchless, it's easy. And so those are things that patients are looking for now. And do you have an option where you can send them a text and they can pay or they can, you know, do all that via text. So that's another great tool to leverage if you don't have something like that in place. That's one way you can utilize text messaging more often. We mentioned web chat. Web chat's great. And there are different types of web chats. Some of them are ma- like, you can, they call them, uh, you know, chats that someone else is managing for you. Yeah. Third party, third party so company. Live chat kind of thing, services. Live yeah. chat types things. For some businesses, that's what they need. And that's the only thing they can, they can mm-hmm. do because the, they're short staffed or they just don't have the staff to manage it themselves. Right. That's great. Um, I would just say, jump into it, like get something. So if you don't have the staff, if you're so overwhelmed that you can't respond, maybe some sort of a managed chat's the way to go. My recommendation would be if you have the ability to have your staff manage it, do that because they know your business better than anyone else, right? They can field those questions. They can really help to convert those leads better than a third party Oh awesome. yeah, there's no question. I think that's yeah. one of the questions I get because I'm a big proponent of live chat. Um, yeah. I am a big proponent, and I, you know, I have partnerships with some. But I think the, you know, uh, I think at the end of the day, there's nobody that's that is, and, and that's the concern of a lot of doctors. I even say, what is who's managing those, and what are they saying, yeah. and 
you know, they, they, there's a, a concern uh, about what messaging is being said uh, during, you know, in those engagements when it's not my people, when it's not my team, you know, because I know what they're going to say, or at least they think they'll. Uh, I know what they're yeah. going to say to those types of things, or at least we've prepared them to, to answer it in that way. Um, so I, I think that's another barrier. That's always been another barrier for these practices to, to adopt those types of things is fear of the unknown. They don't know. <laughs> and, and rather than risk of, you know, an occasional, you know, mistake or something, now they throw the baby out with the bathwater and just don't do it at all. Yep. You know, I think that happens more often than not, right? Doctors are, they, they're successful already, or they've been successful yeah. doing the same thing for years. So why change or yeah. why take a risk or why? Um, but there are, I will say too, like there are better ways to do things than, than, than other. Mm -hmm. There are some chats that are just better than other chats. And so yeah. do tailor it to your needs. If you need mm -hmm. someone to help manage it with you for you, there's companies out there that can help with that. But if you do have the extra staff, or I've even had businesses that have turned Podium on and they hire an extra staff member to just specifically manage the chats just because of the lead flow that's coming in and the, yeah. the importance that they realize there is on that messaging component, right? So right. that might be something you end up doing because mm -hmm. of the increase in lead, lead flow. How about, and maybe I don't know because uh, I haven't looked into it as much. What about outreach? Uh, so we talk about, you know, email marketing and, you know, things like that. Um, do you guys, you know, promote or do you guys encourage a lot of promotional, you know, a lot of practices would use stuff like MailChimp to send out emails and, you know, constant contact and stuff to do email marketing. What about text messaging as it relates to, um, you know, managing patients primarily from a, because they want to promote stuff. If I've yeah. got a lot of different uh, procedures, treatments, new technology, uh, seasonal offers, things like that. Um, how do you guys, how would you say to, to leverage those types of things uh, in practices with, with text messaging? Yeah, I think text is a great medium to use for those because it's, again, it goes back to text mess. The average text message is open within three minutes, right? People check it, they see it. Uh, especially if it's coming from a regular number, mm -hmm. if it's, if it's coming from like a weird five digit right. number, not going to be as effective, but that's something that we always push people to do is to connect your business number as your texting number, if you can, because then okay. it's coming directly from you. Right. So yeah. that'd be like just a tip for this, a, a takeaway would be, if you have a texting tool, or if you're looking into one, try to get one that can link your phone number for your business to, to your texting tool. Cause that'll help a lot right there. You know, uh, that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. It just looks more real. It, it looks real, right? No one likes to get mm -hmm. those text messages from those six digit numbers. And mm -hmm. you're wondering if it's a real text or not. So just one tip would be that the, what I will say is, so Podium has recently launched what's called campaigns within our, our platform. And what we found, it took us a little while to launch this, but what we've done is we've created a tool within Podium that'll collect opt-ins from your patients as they leave your reviews, as they, as you communicate back and forth via text messages, we're actually gaining opt-ins from your patients. And that allows you now to market to them. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of, a lot of doctors that I've talked to, they're hesitant to really do mass texting or text marketing because of TCPA rules mm -hmm. and the fines that can be associated with that. I mean, it can be pretty hefty, right? Yeah. It, it's not cheap. That, I mean, that's the concern. That's, that's definitely yeah. the concern. Yeah. It, it's not cheap. And no one wants to get hit with the $10,000 fine because they were marketing to patients in a way that they shouldn't be. And that's where the opt-ins piece is critical. So mm -hmm. for, for the reminders, the recall for, you know, asking for review, things like that, you're fine. But when you cross that, when you cross that bridge to where you're now actively campaigning or marketing right. people, you do need to have opt-ins and you need to have those saved somewhere mm -hmm. as proof. 
So if you ever do get hit up or questioned, you have the proof that those people have opted in to your service, right? So that's something that's new that Podium has recently launched is that opt-in tool. And the great thing is, is by doing your other types of texting, we're Mm -hmm. gathering these opt-ins. So then maybe you have a a month where you want to run a quick promotion. Mm -hmm. You can go in and you can grab 50 of those people that have opted in and shoot them a quick message yeah and and see what the response is like yeah no i think you know as i started to uh, again uh, i heard about you guys early on um you guys reconnected with me you know when i moved over to uh, medshark and we founded medshark digital uh and and i revisited kind of what you guys done and and also i forgot to congratulate boy you guys got some really good uh vc funding to, to develop resources i think even google ventures even invested in you guys um i mean congratulations that's great that's that's huge um great credibility great credibility and now you've got the resources to develop technology uh beyond you know just digging it out of your own pocket so congratulations yeah thanks no it's 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 really helped i've been here four years at podium it's been the fastest company i've ever worked for as far as growth goes and a lot of that has to do with the product right the, the vision, um, but, but also we've had some really good opportunities as far as funding and, and partners that way that's helped. But yeah, one of, the, one of the benefits with Podium is we have, we're in every single vertical. Mm-hmm. So we're in every sort of industry. You'll run into, you know, if you're going into a retail store, you might see Podium's widgets somewhere, or you might get a text message that says powered by Podium and it's asking for a review invite. We get calls all the time from doctors that are like, I went to do this or I bought a car and I got your invite. How do I get this for my business? Right. (laughs) But that's uh, the nice thing about that is we have a ton of resources behind the product to make it as to make it what it is today and to get it to where it's at. And so our our engineering team, they're constantly making improvements and changes to how Mm -hmm. how we message people or like campaigns, for example, that's a new product as of this month. So right. we just recently launched it, but it's been a game changer for a lot of businesses because it now gives them that tool they've wanted for a really long time, but they haven't known how to go about it mm-hmm. in a in a legal way, right? Gotcha. So, uh, you know, I'm going to end this with a, a, a request. I'm going to end this with yeah. a request. Um, your uh, data that you sent over, it was called the State of Business Texting Report. Great, great information. Um, how can practices, is it possible for practices to get a copy of that? It is. And if you want to go to our blog on podium.com, we have that report on our oh, website. Okay. You can get access to it. We have a lot of other really good content on there too. So if you're looking to, if you're just looking for ideas on how to get better as a business, get better as a practice, increase your local presence, our blog is full of that content, right? So I would go there. You can refer to that document. Um, One other thing I'll throw out there, Bill, because I think a lot of times people are hesitant to jump on to something like Podium or to to a texting platform or a web chat platform because they're unsure of how it's going to work. Right. And what we've done this year is we've launched what we call Podium Starter. So any business can hop on to our website. There's a link you can sign up for. It's free. It doesn't cost you. So if you want to jump on there and you want to give it a shot and say, hey, I'm going to add this widget to my website. I'm going to try sending out some text messages and see how it works. You can. You can give it a shot and and see how it works for your business. And so we've done that. We've done that because we know when someone gets on the platform, they're going to see the results. They're going to see the success and they're going to want you know, they're going to come back I asking mean, for what else hey, can you guys do? <laughs> I'm a believer, man. I've, I've yeah. been a believer in this for, for a while now. Um, but I think you're, you're kind of getting a, especially with COVID, I think with all this remote and heck, we're even doing everything digitally now. We're having this, we probably wouldn't be having this, um, you know, webcast yeah. had it not been for a lot of the, you know, uh, remote learning and, and information uh, distribution through digital. 
Um, so that's great. Um, is there uh, is there anything else you want to close with, or any other takeaways that that you feel like uh, we I may not have asked, or uh, you feel would be of value? You know, I I think we've had a really good conversation. I guess to to finish or wrap it up is if you if you're not texting yet, if you haven't taken that leap, go do it. I, I can promise you it's going to be better for your business. It's going to help. You're going to get more leads, more flow coming in. And if you need a way to do it, that's not going to cost you anything initially, or it's not going to really be much of a risk for you. Jump on podium. It's a free tool there. Right. And so that's, we've given that to people. We actually started it during COVID. That's when we oh, launched okay. it was to help businesses that were getting so you know, affected by yeah. not having, they had to adapt or change yeah. the way they were doing business with consumers, uh, with their customers. And so that's when we came out with it. Uh, but it's a great tool, great tool to try. And so that's, that my, great. I guess my number one thing, is if you're not doing it, start. start. Well, Hey, Josh, thank you again for your time today, your insight. Uh, I would maybe like to revisit uh, another uh, episode with you because there's uh, a lot of other uh, yeah. features and, and we talked about text messaging today, but there's a lot of other things that I think um, you might be able to shed some light on and pr some perspective, certainly for me too. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm, okay. I'm always down for another episode. So, okay. Thanks. Sounds thanks good, Josh. You have a good day. Take care, bud. Thanks for joining us for the Med Shark Insider with Bill Fukui. Join us next week for another dive into all things medical marketing. All episodes can be streamed at www.medsharkdigital.com slash medshark-insider.